I want to start with a straw poll. Let's see your hands. Who here believes that they provide at least an above average service to their clients? Can I see your hand? Now look around. What's the problem here, guys? We cannot all provide an above average service by its very definition. And yet we all believe we do. We all try to. We all try to juggle the emails and the voicemails and the work and going out and seeing clients and managing staff and keeping our bosses happy and so on and so forth. Who here are partners today? Okay. What I usually say is, you are the problem. <laughs> we know that. <laughs> but I think today, it's all the partners who aren't here who are the problem and we'll give you guys a break. Is that fair? When we're doing business development and marketing and networking, the last thing we should be talking about is audit services or reviews, a and work, audit and attestation. Why is that? Boring? Clients see no value in that. It's a distress purchase. <laughs> the definition of an auditor is someone who arrives at the end of the battle and bayonets the wounded. Literally. They don't go in their PJs, pull the curtains open and say, today's going to be a fabulous day because the auditors are coming in. <laughs> then why is it that that is what most of us in public accounting try to market? It adds no value, it's a distressed purchase, the clients think you are a right royal pain in the backside and they begrudge every dime you charge for it. Where there are things that we have up here, intellectual property, intellectual knowledge, processes that we've learned from previous years' experience, that we could provide a different service to our clients over and above the audit that our clients would just love, pay you a handsome fee for, and make more referrals to you. Act like a host in these events. The host will be grateful to you because he or she cannot possibly get round to everyone who's there and make sure that they've all got a full drink and they've all got a sandwich and they're all being entertained or spoken to or they've all been introduced to somebody else. And you'll be a very popular guest at these events and you'll suddenly see more invites coming in. That way someone, whether it's a potential client or not, doesn't really matter at this point. You may not know who they are, what they do, whether they could be a client or even if they're a competitor. They could be a future employee that you could poach from a competitor of yours. But they will know that you're a friendly, outgoing, warm person just by that one random act of kindness. Of pulling them away from that wallflower situation and getting them introduced to someone who they haven't known before and would never have met otherwise. Find useful pieces of information on that particular industry. What uh, reg rules and regulations are, have recently changed that they may not be aware of. Look in the trade press for that particular industry, whatever it might be, and find me articles. And then, once you've got half a dozen to choose from, pick the best one or two and send them on to them. We're building that relationship. We've got to give before we get. It's like a bank account. You can't take out what you haven't put in. Because what's the first thing that people volunteer you for when they find out what you do for a living? Treasurer. treasurer. Anyone here a treasurer of one thing or another? What a pain in the backside that is. Yeah? But again, that's something else that we can delegate to someone else and take the credit for the work quite happily. But it's very important that we do that. And it's, again, in connection with the event, yep, great idea. But a wider scope is that why should we want to be the treasurer of any particular trade association? So you can see who's involved, who the members are. Get credibility within that industry, within that niche. Builds trust, yeah. Ah, we're getting warmer now. We're other members, but if you are the treasurer, do you not often then sit on the executive committee? 
or the equivalent thereof of that trade association. And who else will also sit on that executive committee? Yeah, other members. But I'll give you a clue of what I'm thinking. It starts with E and ends in editor of the newsletter. So each of these organizations publish their own newsletter of some sort, even if it's online. Now you can start developing a relationship with the editor of the trade press to the point where when you feel the time is right, you have that conversation with them. And you say, look, I've noticed there's no accountant writing for the trade newsletter. I can provide you with you know, as many articles as you want that are tailored to this industry. How about I just send you one or two? Have a look at them. If you want to publish them, go ahead with my blessing. And before you know it, you're now writing for the trade press for that niche market. Now, what sort of power do you think that has in the eyes of potential clients who are also in that marketplace? So some of the lessons learned, I'm going to talk about following up a little later, but getting your team together, agreeing on the strategy, dividing targets up between team members, rather than just going as a group and having no plan of action. Allocating specific people who are going to be there who you want to meet to specific team members. Introducing them to the appropriate person. And then when you've done that, your job is not over. Your job then is to maybe go out and find somebody else who you would like to do business with in the long term and develop a new relationship with them.